Greetings. For today's video, we're going to be taking a look at 3D carving uh, with a CNC machine. It's pretty much basically what I want to show you is my workflow uh, from beginning to end, or near end for that matter. Um, what I'm talking about is relief carving such as this. Uh, this happens to be in cherry wood done on this machine. Um, I think it was last uh, spring or last fall. Uh, I myself am not a modeler. I'm not a sculptor. I can't do uh, very beautiful works of art. I can do industrial design and that's kind of where my world ends. So I go online and I look uh, for STL models that I can download. I take those files uh, download them, evaluate them for uh, the possibility of 3D carving because a lot of them are really uh, designed for uh, 3D printing, a lot of those 3D models that are passed off as for CNC use. Uh, but nonetheless, I'll go through, look at it. If it really does uh, strike my fancy, I'll go through, import it into uh, Fusion 360, uh, do some conversion there, apply some tool paths to it, bring it out to the CNC, and load uh, the data into the control, check it, do the setup, and then it's sit back and let it run for hours on end. Now, on this particular project here that uh, we filmed for this, the uh, program itself, the CNC program, was about a half a million lines of code. So it's a massive amount of data. Uh, which kind of takes it out of the realm of a lot of hobbyist level CNC machines. Uh, some of them today have uh, had enhancements where they can do this sort of thing and do it effectively. Uh, you do want a machine that's fairly uh, reliable because there's not a whole lot of joy getting four hours into a, an, a carving process and then watching it all go to crap at some point because of a mechanical failure with your system. So a uh, good reliable machine is helpful. A uh, good control is helpful. A good spindle. Uh, the spindle's going to be running for a long time. Now my old spindle here, this thing's probably in the neighborhood of six or seven years uh, old. Um, it's a Chinese system. It's probably a $200, $250 spindle. 24,000 RPM, and it's been getting noisier and noisier each year of use, and it's probably on its last leg right now. Of course, I said that two years ago, and it's still running. Uh, but it is an important aspect of what you can do with CNC carving. You'll have to have a good set of tools. Now, the bulk of what I use would be a ball end mill, roughly about a quarter inch ball end mill to do most of my roughing, and then I use tapered end mills to take care of the finer details. Once it's all processed and uh, machined on the CNC router, uh, if your cutters are good and sharp, you'll get good crisp detail like this uh, with very little um, finishing work to do on it. Now at this point, I don't have really good refined finishing uh, uh, suggestions or information for you. I've been using some of the sanding nylon brushes. Uh, had fairly good uh, results with that. Uh, some of the other uh, funky looking sanding wheels that work really well. Uh, you can forget a lot of the typical random orbits, the um, uh, uh, brush sanders that are uh, a wire brush. Forget that. That'll just chew it up uh, real bad. Uh, random orbit, bell sander, none of that's going to work on this. Uh, you kind of got to get into it. A lot of handwork and detail work uh, sometimes is required. On this particular one here, um, which you'll see here running in this video, um, there's a, it's a very hard maple in the cutter that I used. It is very old, very dull. It's done a lot of projects over time. Uh, and it's, it, it really should be thrown away, which it will be probably as soon as I take it out of the spindle. Uh, but it's left a lot of fuzz on there, and uh, that's where those wire brushes can help out. Now, 
As uh, I come up with more reliable uh, me methods for that uh, finishing and detailing, I'll do another video on that in the future. But for now, uh, I just want you to get familiar with the workflow. So we'll go into the computer uh, system. I'll show you what I do in uh, Fusion 360. It really won't take long. It won't be a tutorial or anything. And then we'll come back out here, and I'll walk you through the setup. We'll set it up, run the thing, and we'll wrap it up at that point. Nearly all of my CAD CAM work is done in Fusion 360. I have the personal license for it, so mine might look a teeny bit different than yours if you're, of course, using Fusion 360. We'll start out by inserting a mesh file, and uh, in our case, that's an STL file that I downloaded from one of the websites that provide these files. And uh, first thing I'll notice right away is it's a very fine mesh, so I'm going to go through and reduce the number of triangles that create the overall shape. Uh, yeah, that reduces the uh, resolution, but uh, it allows us to do it much more efficiently, and you will not see that change or effect in the final product anyhow. After that, I need to make sure that it's scaled the correct size, so I'll measure it, and then uh, apply a scaling factor uh, to the model and shrink it down to the size that I want. Moving to the manufacturing side of the software, I'll go through, check my setup. Now I want to verify the origin of the model. Uh, that's going to be important because I'll need to uh, touch off the workpiece to that location by setting the work offsets at that point. Uh, in this case, where you look good, I'm going to add about a half inch of stock all around so that the tool can uh, enter into the rough material, the raw stock, uh, safely without wrapping into it. We'll select a tool. My first tool in this case is a ball end mill, quarter inch diameter or about six millimeters. And I want to perform a parallel machining operation. And in this case, it'll be roughing. Uh, it only takes a second to enter a few variables to uh, get it to do what I want. We'll take a quick look at it. Uh, in the graphics and the toolpath looks like what I want it to look like. Next up we're going to go into the finishing for this model and uh, even though it doesn't have super fine detail like the uh, other engraving that I was showing you earlier, I'm going to use a 0.02 uh, radius taper end mill and uh, that would be a half a millimeter uh, and that gives me really fine detail. For the finished machining operation, I'm going to select Parallel Machining. It'll make series of paths back and forth, uh, stepped apart uh, or spaced apart by a small amount. For the roughing, I think I was at about 0.03 inches, 30 thousandths, or uh, about 0.75 millimeters. Uh, for finishing, I'm going to use a much smaller step over so I get a very fine finish. And in this case, we'll use about five thousandths of an inch. After it uh, creates the toolpath, you'll notice that in the graphics, it's almost a solid image. Uh, it's hard to see a lot of the details, so I've uh, gone through and spaced it out a little more so that we can see it. We'll simulate it real quick. I'll go ahead, post out the program, and here is the code. Now that I'll copy onto a flash drive and load right into my CNC machine out in the shop. Out at the machine, I'm going to first start out by picking my tooling. Uh, I've got a wide variety of tools uh, for both isolation milling and CNC carving. I use tapered end mills for the fine detail work, and then I use quarter inch ball end mills, carbide, uh, for doing a lot of the roughing work uh, for the CNC carving. Then I pay attention to how I want to secure the workpiece to the table. I can use toe clamps uh, such as this one, uh, drill and uh, use uh, regular clamps with T-slot type nuts on them. Uh, my favorite method is truly uh, carpet tape. This is a very good high quality carpet tape. Uh, it's much better than what you find in home centers. 
Then I move on to loading in the program and I'll run a graph of it to make sure I did everything right in the CAM software. And what uh, we'll be able to see here is a 3D view of it and that'll give me a good perspective of if everything is right or wrong. Looking at it from the top view you don't get a good view. Next up I'll have to load in a tool. My automatic tool changer can't handle larger tools like this. It's only for eighth inch shank tools. With the tool in, uh, installed and the part on the work uh, table, now I can set my zero point on the workpiece. And that's just a simple matter of touching it off to a piece of paper and then inputting uh, some, some values and establishing that work position. I have a variety of different uh, dust collection shoes that I put on the system. Uh, in this particular case, this is a 3D printed model with brushes and it does a great job of containing the chips. When I start running the program, I often uh, will slow it down a little bit. I have override controls uh, so that my approach I can check and make sure everything is safe. Uh, for roughing with that quarter inch carbide ball end mill, I'm usually going at about 40, 50, 60 inches a minute, somewhere in that range. And uh, uh, my spindle speed for this particular tool is probably about 15,000 RPM. Uh, you can go up or down from there. Uh, I don't generally run my spindle any faster than is needed to do the job properly. If you spin it up too fast, it doesn't really help. Uh, here's what the finish looks like on the part after the roughing. Now we'll start seeing the finishing tool come in, and that is that uh, 20 thousandths radius uh, tapered ball end mill. And I love using those for 3D carving because they are a very rigid tool uh, and yet get you down to a very fine point so you can get exceptional detail. Now this tool is running at 22,000 RPM and at about the same feed rate I was using the roughing tool. I think it was 40 inches a minute. But as you can see that fine point allows it to get into all the little nooks and crannies uh, to really bring out the detail in the overall carving. Now. Uh, the dust collection hood in this particular case, uh, this is probably one of my favorite ones uh, that I use when I'm uh, doing filming work because it still extracts a lot of the dust, nearly all of it, uh, but it, it doesn't block the camera view so we can actually see what's going on. And this process is much slower. Uh, the step over on this tool is about five thousandths. Uh, as opposed to about 40 thousandths or 30 thousandths I was using on the roughing tool. These are just some views looking at it from different angles, the whole machine, so you get an idea how fast things are moving. This is real time, it's not fast forwarded or slowed down at all. Uh, and some close-ups of what the finish looks like and of course the cutting operation. And it is a lot of this detailed, fine little movements uh, where in this particular uh, example, it's actually quite slow, but uh, in other materials, I might be cutting at a much higher velocity. And that's where uh, you gotta be careful with slow machines, because if you're cutting cherry wood, you're gonna get a lot of burn. Here you can see the cycle time at just about four hours to finish mill that whole surface there. So that should give you a rough idea of what's involved with CNC carving uh, on your machines and what is needed and so forth. Um, I'm going to let you, the audience, kind of tell me what more you would like to see with this. Um, I can do a wide variety of different videos on the subject matter. I'm just not sure what uh, the audience would like to see, you folks. So. Please leave some comments below with suggestions or requests and we'll see what I can do uh, to help accommodate you. That'll wrap it up for this video. Thanks for watching.